I'm going to show you guys how to use a mil dot reticle. Here is the most basic mil dot reticle. It has five mils per side. It has one, two, three, four, and the post end makes five. And same with over here and above and beyond. Of that reticle, there are other mil dot type reticles. Over here is the TMR. It actually has five mils. One, two, three, four, and then the post end makes five. Same with above and below and off to the side. It has half mil hash marks, including regular full milled balls, mil dots. So you'd have half, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, and out here on the ends it actually has two tenth mil hash marks. So that way you can actually measure and then ha use that in relation with your mil relation formula to get a finer measurement to figure out how far away the target is. And also down here, we have the Gen 2 style mil dot. It's like the Gen 1, but it has half mil hash marks and keeps the area uncluttered. And it's easy for you to sit there and, and say something is 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 9 tenths, 1 tenth, 2 2 and a half, whatever you would need, you can sit there and easily, with that half mil hash mark in there, distinguish where 0.5 is compared to this reticle where you can't. You have to sit there and visualize where the half mil hash mark is. Not a big deal. If we're over here, here's a one a breakdown of one mil. You have your dot and your other dot and the bar in between. The center of the dot to the center of the dot is one mil. If you take the dot and look in your manual, it'll usually tell you that most mil dot are actually diameter of 0.2 mil. If we cut that in half, we know that that's 0.1 mil, so the center of the dot down to the bottom edge of the dot, that'd be 0.1. Well, if we take 0.1 and we take this dot and subtract 0.1, we know this distance is 1 itself, subtract 0.2, and we know that the bar's width is 0.8. And you can, like I said, you could visualize where the half mil is. It's not, with the, all this, we can measure one tenth, two tenths. Um, you could go all the way outside to the outside edges, have 1.2, 1 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 0.8. There's lots of ways you can break this reticle down so you can use it to measure. And then if you go over and have a style like this that actually has the half mil hash mark, you could see where the half mil hash mark is. Well, there would be 0.5, there would be 0.6. It's a lot easier to make your measure, measured adjustments so you can get your targets, make your hits on your targets downrange. Now you're going to say, well, I don't know what a mil is. How do I apply this information that I've now learned? Well, a mil is an angular adjustment. It starts off small at 100, and, or whatever distance you choose to start off with, and it gets bigger. But it's still just just one mil. The definition of a mil is a mil is one one thousandth of something. It's one mile at a thousand miles, one fathom at a thousand fathoms, one meter at a thousand meters. Well, how do you apply that? Well, one mil equals one yard at a thousand yards, or 36 inches at a thousand yards. If we move the decimal place over and make it 100, and we do the same to the 36, it would tell us that at 100 yards, a mil equals 3.6 inches. See how it's small over here? 3.6, and then it goes all the way up to 36 over here at a thousand yards? Now you're going to sit there and go, whoa, that's too complicated a math. There's no way I could possibly know what a mil equals in inches and all, all these little areas and, and measurements. If it's 327 yards, 783 yards, well, you don't sweat it. It's just a mil. We don't fret the math trying to figure out what this is in inches because we don't use inches in our, ter in our, in our adjustment system. It's in mils. Most new mill reticle scopes are changing out to mill mill, meaning mill reticle with mill turrets. The old style were mill reticles with minute turrets, and to do those adjustments, that's a whole nother video. And so, anyway, you now know what a mill is. You know how we apply it. 
if you aim at a target and you miss, let's say off the end of my finger, you're one mil low and you're one mil to the right. So we dial up one mil and we dial left one mil. It's not hard. Your adjustments are usually in tenth mil, so ten clicks get you down to that one mil. Another ten clicks, down to the next mil. Another ten clicks, down to the next mil. It doesn't matter if it's two feet or ten miles away. If you're aiming right here at your target and you spot the miss low, say right here, well that's about 4.5, 4.4, you dial 4.4 mils up and you hit it. It doesn't matter. That's the beauty of the angular measurement. It doesn't matter the distance. It doesn't care. If you can see what you're aiming at and you can spot your miss, you can make a dialed correction to hit it. So, now that you know how to apply the mill dot reticle and the, why they look, some of them look different, it's not that the measurement's different, it measures the same, it's just they have a, give you a finer way to measure it, and you can even measure on the widths of the bars themselves, not just the, where the spacings. You'll make a range card using a ballistics calculator. That ballistics calculator can be told to spit you out your adjustments in mils or minutes of angle or whatever angular adjustment you want to run. And once you've got that, you'll you'll have a range card that looks somewhat like this. And this is just a really rough crude one, doesn't apply to any particular gun. But the way it would work is, okay, I've got 100 yards zero on my gun, so it's zero. Say I had a target at 300 yards, well, 1.9. Well, I'd look at my target, find 1.9, well, we know that ball's edge is minus 0.1, so there's 1, 1.9, there's 1.9. I put where I want that bullet to strike at 1.9 and I fire. If I missed all over here, half a mil, then I just dial right half a mil and aim dead on where I wanted it. It's pretty simple. For the sake of expediency, you should probably dial elevation and hold wind because wind is constantly picking up and letting off, changing direction and speed. So it's easier to use the reticle and dial the elevation in so you're aiming dead nuts on that target. But the wind will pick up and let off and I can sit there and I could add some track right on that line as the wind's needed. And I base my hold off this card down here. So now we got this card right here, and it says 200, 300, 400. Well, what happens if you got a 250-yard target? Well, you could find the halfway point between 0.5 and 0.9, and that would give you a good rough start. So we'll just say one. We'll just say for the sake of expediency, 1.1 is the halfway point. So 250 yards, 1.1. We call that target out. I'd go back up to my reticle. Okay, 250 yard target, give me 1.1. There's your one. Bottom edge of that ball is 0.1. 1.1, fire. And if you, like I said, if it's off, this the ballistics calculator is going to spit you out this information, and it's only as good as the information you feed it. You give it the, the information regarding the, the individual bullet you are running, its muzzle velocity, its ballistic coefficient. And on top of that, you're going to tell the computer what kind of rifle you're running. It's twist rate, the sight height, the type of adjustments on your scope, whatever. And once you have it, it's going to give you the card. The card is not God giving you the answer to your tr problems. This needs to be, go you need to go out and confirm this distance. So if you were, are planning on shooting deer out to, say, 400 yards, then you better get your ass out on the range for the two weeks before deer season and shoot shoot a few range sessions at least out to 400 yards and confirm that these dopes are accurate. And, and if they're not accurate, if you went up here and you took a shot at 400 yards and it said 3.2 and you held 3.2 and it was wrong, if it ended up needing 3.5, because we're trying to be precise here, people, if it needed to be 3.5, then you shoot 3.5. You go back to your range card, you scratch that off, get rid of it. It's no good. Right in there, three. Uh, 
And then when the time comes and you have a 400-yard shot, you're ready to rock and roll. And if you do have to take a shot at an extended distance beyond what you've trained for, you can at least use this data to give you somewhat of an educated guess of what it's supposed to be. You do not want to rely upon a ballistics calculator because batteries die. Things take a crap. I had this damn camera die twice just trying to get a video set up so I could show you guys this. Do not rely upon electronic equipment to get your hits down range. Now, the mill dot reticle is not a ballistic drop compensating reticle. This bar ball doesn't equal 100, this one doesn't equal 200, this one doesn't equal 300. We are not relying on a gimmick. We're not looking at the Varmint Hunter's reticle or that big hollow ball Nikon reticle you'll see out there where they actually say that each one of the hash marks on it is equivalent to a given distance. This system relies upon you, the shooter, to understand what your dopes are and how to apply them. The beauty of this system is it will always work. It doesn't matter if you're mounting it on a 22, a 270, a 50 cal, whatever. As long as you are relying on a gimmick to get you where you need to be, it will fail you. And the, and the thing is about these dopes, these dopes are good for that day of shooting or any day that has the exact same atmospheric conditions as that day. If you go out and shoot an 80 degree day and sight your rifle in, throw it in the closet and then come back and go shooting deer season in November and it's 20 degrees outside, this data is no good. And that's part of this game. If you're not willing to put in that kind of time, then you don't need to be taking these kinds of shots on live animals. You'll see other reticles out there where they actually have like a Christmas tree pattern. They'll actually have expanding out and out and out and out. It's the same thing. They're still using mills, but what they'll do is they're adding more hold points so you can expediently hold, up, hold over and hold off a target fast. Now, it's going to be more precise to use your turret heads and dial your corrections and aim dead on that target. That's the perfect world. Sad fact is we don't live in a perfect world. You need to be able to get a shot off in a hurry. That's what those kinds of reticles are for, and these reticles. If you know how to use this guy, you can be pretty fast. And keeping your, your system simple, understanding how your dope should be written, and over here's your wind column. This is your 10 mile an hour full value wind. That's for another video too. We're not going to get into it here. This, this whole video is just to show you how a mill dot reticle works, how we break it down, and how you apply it, hit or miss. Make sure, too, that you look in your manual and it'll tell you what the mill setting is on your reticle. A first focal plane scope doesn't matter. That reticle will grow and shrink with the target. A second focal plane, the ones you've most of you have probably seen, it's, this reticle stays the same size regardless of the magnification. Well, we need to have a particular magnification so that way when we measure something, it's a given measurement, not just a rough, uh, a rough guess. All right, so now we got the reticles, why some of them look different in relation to each other, how they're broken down, what a mill is, what an angular adjustment kind of it basically is, what a mill equals and how you get it down to actually the finest increment that you'll probably ever need it but you're not ever going to use this number because we only play in mills or tenth mills and what a dope card roughly should look like and you can make them as as fine increment 150 125 1050 whatever you want all right hope this helps if you liked it give me a thumbs up or give me your give me your comments bye